Hello again. This is Math 2232 coming to you from the College Uta page. And this is the conclusion of the lecture entitled Some Trigonometric Integrals, Products of Sines, Cosines, Tangents, and uh, Secants. As always, please be an active learner as you watch these videos. By way of introduction, um, we've covered products of sines and cosines. Now we're going to do some analysis on the possibilities before we jump into examples. So we're going to be considering things of the form the indefinite integral of uh, secant to the n x times tangent to the m x dx. And like we did before, we're going to be working with the Pythagorean identity, sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x is equal to 1. But we're going to change this into tangents and secants by dividing all the way through by cosine squared. So we'll end up dividing all the way through by cosine squared, and the resulting identity that we have is that the tangent squared of x plus 1 is equal to the secant squared of x. This is going to be one of your go-to identities. We're also uh, going to deal with um, uh, the calculus, and when we take the derivative of the tangent of x, remember we get the secant squared of x. It's not the secant of x, it's the secant squared of x. And when we take the derivative of the secant of x, remember we get the secant of x times tangent of x dx. So we have to remember both of these as we go through the problems. So, if we are going to make a substitution of u equal tangent to x, we need to strip out two secants to make the substitution work. If we want to make the substitution u equal secant x, we'll need a secant x and a tangent x left over in order to use the substitution. So, depending on uh, the availability of these um, factors, uh, that determines what approach we're going to use. So this means that if the exponent on the tangent is odd, then we have at least one secant in the integrand, and we can strip out one of the tangents along with one of the secants. The tangents will then have an even exponent, and so we can use the uh, quadratic identity to convert the rest of the tangents to secants. Uh, this method does require that we have at least one secant in the integral as well, and if there aren't any, we have to do something different, and we will talk about this. If the, seek, uh, if the exponent on the secant is even and the exponent on tangent is odd, then we could actually use either approach, and it's best to take the one that has the smallest exponent for the simplest answer. Okay, so let's dive in and begin doing this one. We're to evaluate the following integral. This is the uh, indefinite integral of secant to the 9x times tangent to the 5th x dx. You know what to do. Let's see how you did. Okay, uh, so what we're going to do in this case, since both are odd, we're going to strip out a tangent x and secant x, and it leaves us secant to the eighth x times tangent to the fourth x, and this is going to be the du. Now this represents a commitment for us to use the substitution u equals secant of x. <clears throat> So this is going to be secant to the 8x, and I'm going to change the tangent to the 4th x into secant squared x minus 1 whole to the squared. Then I do this substitution. u equals secant x, and that means that du is equal to secant x times tan x dx, and I end up with this. Then I continue doing the algebra. I uh, square this binomial getting uh, u to the fourth minus 2u squared um, plus 1. And then I distribute uh, u to the eighth across that, getting this. I do this integral, and then I reverse the substitution. And at the end of the problem, I get 1 over 13 secant to the 13x minus 2 over 11 secant to the 11x plus 1 over 9 secant to the 9th x plus c. Make sure you understand all these calculations. Let's do another problem. 
here, please evaluate the following integral. This is the uh, indefinite integral of secant to the fourth x times tangent to the sixth x dx. You know what to do. Let's see how you did. Now here, uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to, um, since this is even, we can pull out the uh, secant squared, making this uh, secant squared x tan of 6x. This is secant squared x dx. Now this part makes us realize we're making a commitment to do the problem uh, in terms of u equal tan x. So the substitution is u equal tan x du is equal to secant squared x dx. And since I'm making u equal tan x, I'm going to change the secant squared into this secant squared into tan squared plus 1. And this one becomes part of the du. And so doing this substitution for u, then I have u squared plus 1 times u to the 6 du. I distribute the u to the 6. I do my integration. And then I reverse the substitution, the final answer being 1 over 9 tangent to the 9th x plus 1 over 7 tangent to the 7x plus c. Now both the examples fit very nicely into the patterns that we discussed before, but some are different. And so in this one, let's look at um, evaluate the following integral. And now we're integrating tangent to the 1 x dx. Now notice we don't have a secant squared here, so we have to do something different. You may, in fact, recall this from your calculus uh, one days. Uh, so what I'm going to suggest is uh, that you uh, give this a go. Let's see how you did. So what we're going to do is we're going to realize that the uh, tangent is the sine of x over cosine of x. And if I let u equal cosine of x and realizing that um, um, uh, the derivative of the uh, cosine is the uh, minus sine. I get this as minus 1 over u du. And so I um, integrate this, the 1 over u du. The antiderivative of that is uh, the uh, natural logarithm of uh, the uh, cosine. And notice that I've already uh, natural logarithm of u. And then when I substitute in, I get, uh, get this. Uh, so that's what I have, and I can use this property of logarithm, moving this r up into the exponent, to say this minus goes into the exponent. So this is the natural log of the absolute value of cosine x to the minus 1, and the absolute value of cosine x to the minus 1 is the secant plus c. So um, many times people will use this or others will use this. It really doesn't matter uh, which way. Usually I'm going to have you substitute numbers in anyway. So here's a problem for you to do. Evaluate the following integral. The indefinite integral of the tangent cubed of x dx. You know what to do. Let's see how you did. So we're going to break um, tangent cubed uh, x dx into tangent squared times tangent x dx. And tangent squared, I'm going to turn into secant squared of x minus 1. And then I can distribute. So you see this is going to be tangent x times secant squared x minus the integral of tangent x. Now this one we just finished, so we know that this is going to be the, uh, the minus sign is here, and the, I'm writing this this time as the natural logarithm of the absolute value of the secant x. But this one, I can use the substitution u equal tan x, and um, I'm skipping some steps here. Make sure you can fill in the blanks, but we will get as a final answer then. This is 1 half tangent squared x minus the natural logarithm of the absolute value of secant x plus c. Now note that all odd powers of tangent with exception of first tower can be integral with the same method we used in the previous example. So if we add tangent, uh, in this case, to the uh, fifth, we break that into tangent cubed and tangent squared. We can do this. We can distribute. And then we have tangent um, 
a cubed here, and we already talked about uh, integrating that one. And this one's going to be the substitution u equal uh, tangent cube of x. And so that's, uh, that's actually pretty straightforward. Let's look at another example. Evaluate the following integral, and this is the integral of secant x raised to the first power dx. No tangents or tangent squareds or secant times tangent are involved. You know what to do. Let's see how you did. Now this is one of the great techniques in mathematics of multiplying by one in a clever way. And it turns out we're going to multiply top and bottom by secant x plus tangent x over secant x plus tangent x. That is 1, so that doesn't change the value here. But when I distribute, I get secant squared x plus secant x times tangent x. And we note now that if I take the derivative of secant x, I get secant x tangent x. And if I take the derivative of tan x, I get secant squared x. So you see, if I let u equal secant x plus tan x. This is actually 1 over u du. And so um, with this substitution, we have that this integral is equal to the natural logarithm of the absolute value of secant x plus tan x plus c. Now this is a nice idea to keep in mind. This integral will come up several times in our uh, in our work and the idea of multiplying top and bottom by one in a clever way will happen over and over again. And so uh, be alert to these opportunities. Uh, let's look at another example. Uh, evaluate the following integral. This is the indefinite integral of secant cubed of x dx. You know what to do. Let's see how you did. OK, uh, now this one is different from the others that we've done in this section. So the first step is we're going to break up secant cubed x into secant x and secant squared x. And this is an opportunity to do integration by parts. So u is equal to secant x. That means that du is going to be equal to, and that's an equal to, not a minus sign and that is secant uh, x tan x uh, dx. And dv is going to be everything else. This is from the previous section on integration by parts. And that's going to be secant squared x dx. And when I integrate this, I'm going to get that v, again, that is supposed to be an equal sign, tan x. Uh, so we have that this is equal to uv minus the integral of v du. And here's the integral of... Uh, of uh, v du. Now the new integral has an odd exponent uh, on the secant and an even exponent on the tangent. So from the previous examples uh, those won't do us any good. So to do this integral we're going to um, write the tangent in terms of secants. So this is going to be secant times secant cubed minus 1. So there's the minus sign. This is going to be minus secant cubed dx plus the integral of secant x dx. So uh, what happens is you see that this factor is the same as this factor. So I'm going to add that to both sides. That's that um, boomerang kind of thing that we've talked about before. So this says that 2 secant cubed of x dx is equal to secant x tan x plus, and now I'm integrating the secant dx, which we just did, and that's the natural logarithm of the absolute value of secant x plus tan x. So if we divide by 2, we see that this is our answer. And again, we will see this from time to time, so this is a good thing to commit to memory. So the integral, the indefinite integral of the secant cubed x dx is equal to 1 half secant x tan x plus the natural logarithm of the absolute value of secant x plus tan x plus c. So the boomerang idea came up again, and we reviewed integration by parts. Now, we've looked a lot at secants and tangents, but the other trig functions that we could have, uh, cosine uh, 
uh, 1 plus cotangent squared x is equal to cosecant squared of x. And so we could do problems like this as well. And uh, in fact, I've asked questions like this on, uh, on assessments before. So you do want to think about these kind of things. Now, there's one kind of final topic uh, to be discussed in this section before moving on. And uh, to this point, we've looked only at products of sines and cosines and uh, secants and tangents, and I guess here briefly, uh, cotangents and cosecants. Uh, but the method we use to do th these integrals can also be used on some quotients that involve uh, these trig functions. And here's an example for you to ponder. So this is evaluate the following integral. This is the indefinite integral of uh, sine squared uh, x over cosine to the fourth x dx. You know what to do. Let's see how you did. Well, OK, uh, what we can do in this case is strip out one of the sines. And now I have sine sixth x over cosine to the fourth x. But I can change sine to the sixth x to sine squared x whole cubed. And I can change that to 1 minus cosine squared x. And this is cosine to the fourth x. So what I'm going to do is expand this, divide by this, and here I have a nice u substitution to use. So we're going to let u equal cosine x. So I expand this with that substitution, divide by u to the fourth, getting this, integrating term by term, make sure you're following all these calculations, and then I reverse my substitution to get this as my final answer. One third over cosine cubed x minus three over cosine x minus three cosine x plus one third cosine cubed x plus c. So under the right circumstances, we can use this idea. But realize that it would not have worked in this case because stripping out the sign wouldn't have worked. Now you can explore other ways to do this, but it's uh, not this easy of a problem. So the methods that we have talked about here can be applied to quotients of trig functions, provided that the, that the part that you need to be, have stripped out is in the numerator of the quotient. In closing, now more than ever, time is precious. Each day must count. Do the math. It will make you strong. And now more than ever, take care of yourself and of each other. We're all in this together. God bless you all.